Hey guys, and welcome back to the Coder's Legacy channel. In this video, we'll discuss the Python SymPy library. The SymPy library is used for symbolic computation, mathematical operations, symbolic representation, uh, creating expressions, mathematical expressions, and representing them accurately. SymPy has a ton of different features, a ton of different mathematical functions, and if there's something, anything math-related that you're trying to do, SymPy has it. You're trying to calculate something, you know, like a root, the root of an equation, SymPy can do that for you. It has a function for it. You're trying to differentiate something, an expression, SymPy can do that for you. You're trying to integrate something, SymPy can do that for you. You're trying to use some complex feature like um, linear interpolation or something like that. You know, SymPy has functions for that, okay? It's a pretty powerful library in Python and something that I would highly recommend to anyone who's getting into scientific computing, numerical computing, you know, those kind of things, okay? And you can even use it for simple stuff. You want to differentiate something for something, for some reason. Uh, maybe you're making a game or something and you need to, you know, use differentials. You can use SymPy, okay? Again, great library. Let's get right into it. Okay, so SymPy is something that I want to, you know, properly give time to and instead of making just one video, I thought we'd try something new and maybe divide it across like five or six minute videos, okay? And that's what I wanna do. I wanna take in, I wanna take one concept because there are like seven or eight different subtopics that I've identified so far in SymPy that are worth talking about. So I wanna take a look at each topic separately and we'll make one video on each topic, okay? And right now, we're gonna be basically just using some simple features in SymPy not really any features, not really any functions, but we'll take a look at what SymPy can do, how it represents expressions, okay? Again, I think I've been talking too long, so let's go ahead and start. Okay, so what I want to first do is show you how SymPy is more accurate than other libraries. For example, there's the math library, okay? It's also a pretty common library in Python. Now let's say that we want to find the square root of seven. How will I do that? Well, I'm gonna do mat.square root. There's, there's this function and I can just do seven, okay? And if I print this out, what, what do I get? Okay, I get 2.6457 something, something, something. You may think that this is exact. You may think this is an exact value, but it's not. And the reason for that is because the more decimal places you allocate this, the more accurate it'll be. Uh, but in some cases, like pi, okay, the number pi, 21 divided by seven. The problem is over here that this number is like infinite, right? There's like an infinite number of uh, decimal places that it could have. The problem is that it can never be 100% accurate. And when you're performing scientific computations, you want to be as accurate as possible. So uh, let's see what SymPy does. Okay, let's try to use the square root function with SymPy and let's see how SymPy is more accurate than something like the math library. So if I run this code, what do I get? I get square root seven. This is basically a SymPy object that is a representation of the square root of seven. This is 100% accurate because it kind of represents a concept. It represents the square root of seven. It doesn't try computing it into a numerical value, okay? It just, you know, it just gives us the object and says this is the square root of seven, okay? Now let me show you something practical, a practical example where you can say that, okay, I can clearly see that SymPy is more accurate than something like math. Let me show you. I'm gonna use the square root function again from math, okay? And I'll take the square root of seven. So what I'm gonna do is try and square both of these values, okay? the value that we get from these two functions, I wanna square them and see, do we get the value seven back or not? Let's see what happens. I'm gonna use the power function, okay? And there, and the power function here. And let's run this code. There we go, look, now, the math object, when we use the power function on it, it gave us 7.000001, okay? SymPy, on the other hand, gave us an exact seven, okay? What's the reason behind this? 
Well, the reason why math gives us an incorrect value, or it's pretty much correct, but when you're, again, when you're computing, you want a very, very good de you know, degree of accuracy, and you can make mistakes like this. Sometimes even the 50th decimal place can actually matter, okay? In life and death in the situations, in situations where a lot of things are at cost, like satellites and stuff, the, the calculations for missiles and their you know, flight paths and all that, that's, that's sensitive stuff. You need to have as accurate as possible values, okay? So when we're talking about this here, the reason why SimPy returned the exact value seven, because it wasn't an approximation. Because in the math function, we can be sure that there was some rounding off going on in there, okay? And that's why the value is appearing differently, because it was an approximation. SimPy, on the other hand, returned a concept, kind of. So that's why it's seven, okay? Because it was just saying, I'm the square root of seven. So when we squared it, it's obviously gonna be seven, right? So that's kind of what's going on, going on here. When we powered this, it's more like we were squaring 2.645, whatever that, was, that, that value was. But when we're powering this, when we're squaring this, then it's uh, actually, you know, using the square on the square root of seven. Okay, I hope I was able to convey that difference. Okay, uh, again, let's just move on. Can't waste too much time over here. So something else I wanna show you is how to create symbols, how to create expressions in SimPy. Okay, that's basically the last thing we'll take a look at in this video. But this is a, pr a pretty interesting concept, watch. I'm gonna create symbols like this. Simpy.symbols, where is it? Ah, of course, let me just make a slightly adjusted import from Simpy import symbols, okay? And I'll do symbols x and y. Is it just me or is this not updating? The colors, weird. Oh, okay, a bit of a delay there. Now, um, we have now two symbols, X and Y. What do these symbols mean? Well, basically when you're creating expressions like two X squared plus five, X is what? X is not a number. It's not a variable either, not exactly. So that's why we can't represent it in Python code or any programming language. But SimPy gives us the ability to create these symbols. It gives us the ability to create unknowns that we can use in expressions, okay? So what I just did was I actually created two unknowns called X and Y. We can use these in the exact same manner that we would X and Y in actual equations. So for example, let's say I want to create the equation 2X squared plus five. I'm gonna do expression is equal to 2X um, squared, okay, this is how we do squared in SimPy, plus five. Oh, and uh, the reason why that's happening is because you can write it like that. You need to write it like this. Okay, and there we go. Or it depends on how you want the brackets to be actually, but what I mean here is this. So what's actually going on here is two X squared plus five, like this, okay? just to write it out in a slightly different format. So this is what I just did. Now notice something interesting. This is not a string. You might think that we would have to create a string like this, but no, we don't need to do that. We can actually create it like an actual object, like, you know, we're adding some actual integers together, act adding some actual unknowns. That's the cool thing about SimPy, because guess what? It's not just a way of representing expressions. We can also work with these expressions. So for example, if I want to add something, if I want to add five, let's see what happens. I'm gonna print out this expression before and after. Watch what happens. Print and look, it says two uh, X squared plus five. Now it says two X squared plus 10. So it's actually computing it with strings. If you did the exact same thing, what would happen? You would, get, you would get something like 2x squared plus five, then plus five again, because it's just concatenating. But with SimPy, these are actual expressions that we're working with, which is pretty cool. Now guess what? If I change this to y and add a y over here, guess what happens? Same thing, 2y, okay? What happens if I minus y? 
it's going to subtract y. Okay, there we go. And we can also multiply it, multiply it by y. Okay, and this is also a pretty cool thing. It kind of shows it like this. You would never get this, you, know, you would never get this effect anywhere else. You can't represent expressions in this manner anywhere except SymPy. I mean, unless you're using some other good library like SymPy. But here's the cool part. Let's say you didn't want it to be represented like this. What if you wanted the brackets to be opened? Well, SymPy will do that for you as well. Let's just um, change that over there. And what I'll do is print out expression multiplied by y and I'll use the expand function over here. Uh, this function is from SymPy. So I'll do SymPy dot expand. Okay. And just watch what happens. There, you see, this is now the, I know it's a bit hard to see with all the asterisks, but what's really happening here is that it's given us the exact same thing as this, okay, but it's multiplied y with whatever was inside the bracket, okay? So this is the expanded, you know, expression, okay? So this is the stuff, cool stuff about SymPy, and there's even more cool stuff that we'll look at in the future videos. I just wanted to give you an idea about SymPy, how it's used, how to create expressions, and how to do some cool stuff like this. We'll take a look at more stuff later on, okay? How to differentiate, how to integrate, maybe even make some actual, you know, methods, like there's Newton method and stuff, bisection method. We'll, maybe we'll take a look at one, of, one or two of those, just so we can see where SymPy is being used in real life applications. And yeah, I have a lot more content planned, so make sure to subscribe. I have a lot more content. I have a lot more content planned, so be sure to subscribe to the channel, leave a like, leave some feedback, let me know what you want to see. If there's something you want to see in SymPy, some specific feature, even if it's something minor, do let me know and I'll see what I can do. So yeah, see you guys in a later video.